From a very early age, I really became enamored with what a plant was and the notion that from a simple seed, something as profound as a tomato or even a giant redwood grows. My name is Howard Yana Shapiro. For the last 15 years while working at Mars, I was still uh, based here on the campus of UC Davis on a series of projects. In 2008, I made a proposal that we should sequence the cacao genome because not enough work had been done on fundamental genetics to guarantee one of the 10 largest commodity crops sold around the world but grown by four and a half, five million smallholders. Uniquely, we put it in the public domain so it couldn't be patented. And it was used, we released it at seven o'clock in the morning, and at 701 it was used for the first time in Africa. And it's been a directional tool that makes breeding for the future possible in a way that it wasn't before. So the idea that a plant can make its own nitrogen has been one of the holy grails of agriculture. Well, when we look at some of the giant breakthroughs in the 60s, probably the standout piece was the Green Revolution, which was Norman Borlaug and M.S. Swaminathan in India. Now, it didn't really transfer to other parts of the world because there was not a market that would deliver fertilizers and nutrients to those countries. The real issue is why didn't people improve on the system and continuously make improvements year by year? We hope to jump that over with nitrogen fixation in plants. Not only is it saving on the carbon footprint of the nitrogen fertilizer, but it's also a saving for farmers and the impact on the environment is enormously reduced to almost zero. Well, having worked in and around agriculture for more than 50 years, I've seen the change in how we produce our food over that time, and we're now in a renaissance. Never in my lifetime did I think that I could walk through a field with a cell phone and pick up data about every plant that I could see through the phone. Now that's happening. That gives us data about yield, it gives us data about the condition of the plant in the field, whether they need nutrients, whether they're short on water, all these kinds of considerations. They're all linked to a machine learning model which builds and builds and builds and builds. So I feel very optimistic, but it's gonna take a quantum leap for these technologies to be shared around the world fairly. But we need to have the ability to invest on very risky things. We need to have investors who understand that a long-term goal is what it takes sometimes to deliver on a crop, on a technology. I recognize that some are pipe dreams, but some are fundamental changes to the system and how we work today in America and other places around the world. So it gives me hope. And with the training in Africa, the people at the African Plant Breeding Academy based at the World Agroforestry Center in Nairobi, I see what these people are doing once they have all the tools in the toolbox that they need. Well, I think we can work with nature. We can make nature our partner versus our enemy. 